to it yet. I mean, I did, but I, not yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sorry. So, um, Mayor Nicholson, uh, Chris is on, so you don't need to be. Thank you. Sorry about that. He's he should be joining shortly. Item 3.1 is a, an application for a minor variance. Application D-13-138 part of lot 304 of plan 65, except part one on 49R-15734 John Street. There is a recommendation from staff, which I will read as a motion. that the Committee of Adjustment approve the minor variance submitted for the property described as being part of Lot 304 of Plan 6, except Part 1 on 49R-15374, granting relief from Section 6.2 A and B of Cobden Zoning Bylaw 1989-14 to reduce the minimum lot area and frontage requirements for the lot. Can I ask planner Alex Benzi, please, to provide the rationale um, for this recommendation? Okay, thank you, Councillor Trim, and good morning. So this application is submitted as a condition of consent file D10-210. This uh, consent was discussed at last month's Committee of Adjustment. And so this minor variance application, it applies to the severed lands in that application only. And the application uh, was filed by Hannah O'Connell of Sullivan O'Connell LLP on behalf of Jean Claire Fanworth. So the severed parcel uh, in this severance application, it's presently vacant and it's connected to the municipal water and sewer system. 
and it will have a frontage of 17.9 meters and a total lot area of 0.05 hectares. So in terms of uh, relevant policies, the provincial policy statement uh, states that growth and development shall be focused within settlement areas, such as the village of Cobden, uh, to provide for a healthy and livable safe, to provide for healthy, livable and safe communities and ensure that there is a mix of densities and efficiently use land and resources. Um, the lands are also designated uh, village community in the County of Renfrew official plan. And, and like the PPS, the purpose of the village community de designation is to be the place where, where growth is, is concentrated and to provide a variety of different housing types. Uh, there is a section, section 4.32 of the official plan, which also encourages development in village communities that is keeping with the character of the community. And in terms of zoning, uh, the lands are located within the residential one zone. And the minimum lot size for residential property is 550 square meters and the minimum, minimum frontage is 18 meters. So the, um, since the lot has an area just under that at 500 square meters and a frontage of 17.9, this is what the minor variance is for, is to re provide relief um, for the severed lot for the um, lot area and frontage. So whenever there's a minor variance application, uh, we have to review it against the four tests, which are as follows. So the first is that uh, the proposal um, meets the general intent and purpose of the official plan. And in this case, the requested variance uh, does not contravene the policies or intent of, of the official plan. Uh, the dimensions of the severed lots are consistent with the property fabric throughout the village of Cobden. So we do feel that it is keeping in with the character of the village. Uh, the general intent, um, pardon me, test two is that the general intent of the zoning bylaw is maintained. And again, the reduction of the lot size and frontage will maintain the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Um, the lot shape and size are consistent um, as, you, as we discussed at the, uh, during the last month's meeting, as well as at the council meeting last night, uh, these were lots that were created in, in an initial um, plan of subdivision and they had inadvertently merged. So really we're just going back to, to what they were originally. Um, number three is that the variance is minor. Um, and we do feel that the variance is minor there and there will be no impacts anticipated to the adjacent properties or provisions of municipal services. And lastly, that the proposed use of land and structures is desirable for appropriate development. And we feel that uh, this variance is desirable as it will ensure that the, application, the applicant is able to um, reestablish these two parcels of land um, and ensure that um, this parcel of land will be able to accommodate a future residential development. So with that, um, we do feel that the minor variance is a appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. And so we do need a mover and second for this motion. Discussion, sorry. Item number three, two. Application for consent, file D-10-211. Sorry. Is there any discussion? Like, is the applicant here? No. So, by variance? Yeah. I don't believe so. No. Okay. Just ask if there's any discussion, and then... And then, all in favor. Sorry. I'll get... Okay, all the on on the um, last motion, uh, all those in are the, is there any discussion? First of all, don't see any. Uh, all those in favor? Okay. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Councillor Olmsted. Uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. We didn't have a mover and a seconder there either at the st at the start, so we haven't moved the item to discuss. We just we just did it. That's why I was wondering if you could hear us. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Do you have anything to add to this motion, or you're we're no, good? With it? No, we're good. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Yes, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't uh, 
it's, it's, it's better now. Okay, item three, two, then. Application for, for consent, file D-10-211. The recommendation from staff, which I will read as a motion, is that the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Whitewater Region approve a consent application file D-10-211 for the property described as part of lots four and five, Ross Concession 10, Grant Settlement Road, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. Can I have a mover and seconder for this motion, please? Moved by Chris Olmstead, Councillor Chris Olmstead, and seconded by Councillor Connie Tabert. Okay, um, may I ask um, Planner Alex ben Benzi to describe the details of this recommendation, please? Okay, so this application is submitted by JP2G Consultants Inc. on behalf of Joseph Kowalski and this numbered company for the property. Uh, described as part of lots four and five Ross concession 10 on Grant Settlement Road. And the proponent is looking to sever a lot for agricultural purposes. So the subject lands, as you can see in the image are, are quite large and they have frontage on Grant Settlement Road uh, on the west of the property and then the Ottawa River on the east. A portion of the property is cleared and used for agricultural purposes and the remainder of the property is forested and there are permanent and intermittent creeks that kind of run along um, across the property from, from Grant Settlement to the river, creating up uh, valleys around them. So the proposed severed lands would have 314 meters of frontage on Grant Settlement and contain a large portion of those cleared agricultural lands and they would be 28.6 hectares in size. And the retained lands would have the remaining frontage on Grant Settlement and contain um, the forested areas, as well as an existing barn and dwelling and, and outbuildings uh, on the property. So, and uh, no new development is proposed at this time for either the severed or retained lands. Uh, around the property, uh, there are other rural and tourist commercial lands to the east, south and west. So in terms of, of relevant policies, um, in this case, uh, we're looking at uh, development in the rural areas and residential and other types of development are permitted in rural areas, according to the PPS, provided that they are locally appropriate, compatible with the, the landscape and sustained by rural service levels and should not have a negative impact on any of the natural heritage features and the ecological functions of the land. Uh, with the respect to the official plan, so the lands here are designated waterfront exception one, and the policies of this designation are intended to preserve the scenic values of the, of the water here. And I hope I'm pronouncing this property, uh, the Rocher Fondue Rapids uh, of the river. So um, we have to ensure that um, development here uh, considers these, these values when reviewing development proposals. The lands adjacent to the creeks on the property are also designated environmental protection. The creeks and the lands around them are also identified as significant valley lands on the Schedule B Map 4 Natural Heritage Features of the Official Plan. And uh, the Official Plan has a policy that states that whenever development is occurring within or adjacent to these features, that an environmental impact study be done. Uh, however, in this case, because there is no new development proposed on either the severed or retained lands, staff are not recommending an EIS at this time. If in the future development was proposed on the severed lands, there's quite a bit of room around the property um, that isn't in those, those heritage featured areas uh, that could accommodate a future um, dwelling and, and septic system as well. Uh, with respect to the zoning bylaw, so the lands are located in the rural zone of the Ross zoning bylaw. Um, so the severed lands are zoned rural and the retained lands are uh, zoned both rural and environmental protection. Uh, the severed and retained lands will meet the provisions of both of those zones. So bringing that all together, um, staff feel that the severance application at this property will not contravene the policies of the PPS and official plan and will conform to the uh, requirements of the Ross zoning bylaw. Uh, the severed and retained lands will be appropriately sized and for their intended use and they won't place any unnecessary burden on the current provision of municipal services here. 
And as I mentioned, because no new development is proposed right now, um, we aren't seeing any negative impacts on the scenic quality and character of, of this area of the river uh, or to the natural heritage features on the property. And as I mentioned, if the severed lands were to be developed in the future, uh, there is quite a significant amount of room that, that could accommodate that development that doesn't impact the uh, natural heritage uh, valley lands or anything else on the property. Um, and I, Carmen, so we do recommend that um, the uh, severance is passed provided um, the conditions are met. And would you like me to read these conditions? Um, you could just briefly go through them, yes. Please. Okay, so, and I, I will say that there is one small typo in the conditions. Um, so I will read the condition, in, there's a small typo in condition one. So I will read the condition as it should be read. Uh, that two hard copies and one digital copy of the registered plan of survey in conformity with the sketch depicting the severed lands to be supplied to the secretary treasurer of the committee of adjustment. So the, the small typo is that there shouldn't be the lands to be added to. Uh, number two is that one digital copy of the registered plan of survey be supplied to Alana Zato, Renfrew County Secretary Treasurer of the Land Division Committee, and that prior to the issuance of the certificate of consent, the County of Renfrew provide written confirmation that it has received a digital copy of the registered, registered plan of survey. Number three, that the Ontario land surveyor retained by the owner determined the width of the road right away presently in place along Grant Settlement Road and where such right of way is less than 20 meters that a parcel of land representing the missing portion or half of this required width along the road frontage of the severed parcel be transferred to the township free of fees or encumbrances. Furthermore, the applicant's legal counsel shall register the municipal bylaw dedicating the section of the land public. A copy of the registered bylaw must be sent to the secretary treasurer of the committee of adjustment for the condition to be considered complete. And lastly, that the applicant provide to the approval authority of the township a transfer deed of land conveying the severed land for the use uh, for the issuance of a certificate of consent. Thank you, uh, um, Planner Alex. Now we have with us today the applicant and others. And uh, I, since this is being recorded, I would ask uh, uh, you to state your name and then we'd be happy to hear your presentation. And so the applicant, Mr. Kowalski first, if you would like to speak. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do apologize. I'm uh, uh, working at the Toronto Sportsman Show right now, so I, I'm not sure about the uh, ambient noise in the background. But uh, uh, basically what happens is that uh, uh, this particular farm has very good farmland. And uh, I, I've always believed that uh, agriculture and tourism and development can uh, work together hand in hand. And uh, we're in the process of, uh, once the severance is approved, of conveying this to uh, uh, Nagel Farms, who are very good local area farmers, and that uh, good farmland will continue to be farmed in uh, Whitewater region. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Um, to this application, please state your name first. Hello, uh, my name is Catherine Curry. I'm a junior planner with JP2G Consultants. I am uh, Mr. Kowalski's applicant, or sorry, yes, agent, um, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to this application? Hearing none, again, Mr. Kowalski, you can uh, make a concluding statement if you wish. Um, on, only that uh, uh, this is uh, good for our municipality. Uh, the uh, good farmland is protected. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm in the tourism business and tourism has uh, cooperated and worked together uh, with agriculture uh, throughout uh, throughout the municipality. And uh, uh, this is one more step that will continue in that direction. Thank you. 
Now I would ask um, council members if they have any questions or discussion with respect to this application. Hearing none, I will then ask for a vote. All those in favor, please indicate. Opposed? The motion is carried. That was a little smoother. Yeah. Item 3.3, application for consent file D-10-213. It has been recommended by staff that the Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Whitewater Region approve a consent application file D-10-213 for the property described as parts of lots six and seven, Ross Concession 4W and known municipality municipally as 462 Marjorie Road, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. That has been read as a motion, and I would ask for a mover and seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Tabert, seconded by Councillor Olmsted. Now, may I have Planner Benzi describe the details of this recommendation, please? Okay, so this application is submitted by Philip Leslie on behalf of Derek Smith. Uh, for the property at 462 Marjorie Road, and the proponent is seeking to sever the property for the creation of a new residential lot. So the existing agri agricultural property is 27 and a half hectares in size, and it has frontage on both Marjorie Road and Forrester's, Fall Ro Forrester's Falls Road, and the property currently contains a dwelling and several barns and sheds. There are also a few creeks uh, that transects the property uh, with valleys around them. So the severed lands will be 1.45 hectares in size and will be accessed by an existing driveway along Marjorie Road. And the severed lands will contain uh, the dwellings and the outbuildings. The retained lands will be 26 hectares in size and will contain the cleared agricultural lands as well as the creeks and the valley lands. Land uses around the property are other residential and agricultural uses. In terms of the relevant policies, so the PPS states that prime agricultural land uh, shall be protected for long-term use of agriculture and lot creation in these areas uh, is discouraged and may only be permitted in certain cases, such as for a residence surplus to a farming operation as a result of a farm consolidation. Uh, with the official plan, um, the lands are also designated agriculture and the policies of this designation mean that the predominant use of land should be for, for agricultural purposes and uh, related buildings that support the farm operation. So like the PPS, lot creation in agricultural areas is um, only permitted for a new lot, um, for a new surplus lot when the lot is appropriately sized for the type of agriculture use common in an area and for a resident surplus to a farming operation because of farm consolidation. Um, so the PPS and the official plan require that the surplus dwelling be limited in size to accommodate only the, uh, the residential use. Um, additionally, both documents require that a condition be placed um, on the lands to prohibit any future residential uses on the agricultural property. So we staff therefore recommend that a zoning bylaw be obtained as a condition of consent to prohibit residential uses on the retained parcel and protect the agricultural lands. The areas around the, uh, the creeks, uh, per both permanent and intermittent creeks around the property are also identified as significant valley lands uh, in the official plan. But as the severed lands are already developed and there's no new development on the agricultural pieces of retained land, no impacts are anticipated to these features. In terms of the zoning, uh, the severed and retained parcels are also located in with, within the agricultural zone of the Ross zoning bylaw. And there are areas around the creeks that are environmental protection. Let me get to my page here. Um, the severed and retained lands will meet the provisions of the agricultural zone. So subject to the fulfillment of the conditions, um, staff feel that the application will not con contravene the policies of the PPS, the official plan or the county 
the PP, sorry, the official plan of the County of Renfrew or the Ross zoning bylaw, the severed and retained lands, they will be appropriately sized and shaped for their intended use, and they will not place unnecessary burden upon the current provision of municipal services and the resulting lands and uses will be agricultural in keeping with the character of the area. Further, uh, with the zoning bylaw amendment in place, uh, the lands will be protected for their intended purposes. Um, one thing, in during the circulation uh, of, the, of the application to the relevant agencies, we did circulate to the County of Renfrew, but we did not receive any comments yet from uh, the uh, Public Works Department regarding um, uh, just the fact that the property is on Foresters Falls Road. Um, so that is uh, because we did not receive comments from the, one of the conditions that I, I will mention is making sure that um, we do receive favorable comments uh, from, from the county. So staff do recommend that the, um, the uh, application move forward subject to the following conditions. And I will read out these conditions. So the first is that two hard copies and one digital copy of the registered plan of survey in conformity with the sketch depicting the severed lands and lands to be added to supplied, be supplied to the secretary treasurer of the committee of adjustment. Number two is that one digital copy of the registered plan of survey be supplied to Alana Zato, Renfrew County secretary treasurer of the land division committee. And that prior to the issuance of the certificate of consent, the county of Renfrew provide written confirmation that it has, it has received a digital copy of the registered plan of survey. Number three, that the Ontario land surveyor retained by the owner determine the width of the road, the width of the road right of way present presently in place along Marjorie Road, and where such right of way is less than 20 meters, that a parcel of land representing the missing portion or of half of this required width along the road frontage of the severed parcel be transferred to the township free of fees or encumbrances. Furthermore, the applicant's legal counsel shall register the municipal bylaw dedicating the section of the land public. A copy of the registered bylaw must be sent to the secretary treasurer of the committee of adjustment for the condition to be considered as completed. Number four, that the applicant provide the secretary of treasurer of the committee of adjustment with favorable comments from the county of Renfrew public works and engineering department. Any conditions that they require, including but not limited to road widening shall be met prior to the issuance of the certificate of official. Number five, that the owner file and obtain an amendment to the zoning bylaw to prohibit any future residential uses on the retained parcel. And lastly, that the applicant provides to the approval authority of the township a transfer deed of land conveying the severed land for use for the issuance of a certificate of consent. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Now I'd ask um, Clerk Miller, is there anyone on line? No. All right, then um, I would ask council if you've got any questions, concerns, discussion. Hearing none, I then would call for the vote. All those in favor of this application? Opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. Item number three, four. Application for consent file D-10-212. It has been recommended by staff, and I will read this recommendation as a motion, that the Committee of Adjustment of Township of Whitewater Region approve a consent application file D-10-212 for the property described as part of Lot 3, Westmeath Concession 1, east of Muskrat Lake, Hydro Bay Road, subject to the conditions outlined in this report. May I have a mover and seconder, please? Moved by Chris, Councillor Chris Umstead and seconded by Councillor Connie Tabert. Please, uh, Madam Planner, could you give us the details of this recommendation? Yes. Okay, so this application is submitted by Cornelius and Grace Dixtra. Uh, for their property described as part of lot three, Westmeath concession one, east of Muskrat Lake, Hydro Bay Road. And the proponent is seeking to sever a property for the creation of a new lot. Uh, the retained lands contain a dwelling and a shed and the severed lands would consist currently of vacant woodlands. So as you can see on, on the photo below, the both parcels are a bit irregularly shaped um, and they are kind of separated by a creek that runs across the property with the retained lands north of that creek and the severed lands to the south. 
Uh, the property also slopes in a southeast north northwest direction uh, down towards the water course. The lands are surrounded by Muskrat Lake to the west and other residential and seasonal uses uh, to the northeast, south and west. Um, in terms of, of relevant policies, so again, this is in a rural area where residential development um, can be considered provided it's locally appropriate and can be sustained by rural service levels and it does not have a negative impact on any natural heritage features. Um, the PPS does also have a natural heritage features section, uh, which states that these areas are to be protected for the long term and that planning authorities should protect, improve and restore uh, quality and Um, there are a few planning matters um, that are uh, relevant to this application that uh, contain policies in the official plan. So the lands are designated waterfront exception two, which applies to lands located within 400 meters of, Muskrat, of the shoreline of Muskrat Lake. And what this means is that um, this, any development here requires the submission of a water quality impact assessment that demonstrates how development can proceed without uh, negatively impacting surface and groundwater features around the lake. Uh, the suburban lands also contain significant valley lands and significant woodlands that are identified on the natural heritage um, map of the of the official plan. And um, these policies do require that an environmental impact study is submitted to demonstrate that there won't be any negative impacts on these types of features. And um, our records also indicate that there have been a few, at least five uh, previous from the original holding that this land is a part of. So um, in the land divisions of the official plan, um, three new lots are, are, are permitted from a, three new residential lots are permitted from an original holding. And an additional two lots may be permitted if certain criteria are considered. And though creating more than five is generally discouraged, uh, applicants can um, apply for a consent uh, if a supportive planning justification study is submitted that addresses criteria in the official plan as well. So with this application, we did receive a planning justification report that was prepared by JP2G consultants and staff do support its conclusions that an additional lot here is appropriate, provided the relevant studies are submitted and that they're favorable. Lastly, uh, the lands are within 300, because they're in, within 300 meters of, of Muskrat Lake, um, these types of water bodies are identified with the potential to contain archeology span resources, archeological resources. And so whenever there has been three or more lots created from a holding, um, the official plan requires that an archeological assessment is submitted as well um, to ensure that there are no impacts to cultural or archeological resources in the area as well. Uh, with respect to the zoning bylaw, um, both the severed and retained parcels are located within the rural zone and residential use is permitted here. Uh, the retained parcel will comply with the provisions of the zoning bylaw and the severed parcel is large enough to accommodate a building envelope that will also uh, meet the zoning bylaw requirements as well. So just in, in summary, um, the this severance application is, is impacted by, by several matters. Um, because the lot is the sixth new residential lot from the holding, um, the, the planning just, justification report did explain that a plan of subdivision is, is not necessary for the development of the lands. The lot is large enough to support a private well and septic system because it is over is a hectare in size. Uh, the new lot will not negatively impact the financial resources of the municipality. And in terms of lot grading and drainage, uh, the township road superintendent did visit the site and concluded that a lot grading and drainage plan is not required and that there is a suitable location for the driveway towards the south end of the of the, the south end of the property where the topography is a bit higher. Um, so the consultant concluded that the creation of the lot can be considered good, good planning, providing um, the supporting studies to assess the impact on archaeological resources. And the natural heritage features are submitted and are favorable, and staff do support. Consultant. So, uh, given that, uh, the conditions that would apply to this proposal, I will read them again. Uh, first is that two hard copies and one digital copy of the survey in conformity with the sketch 
depicting the severed lands and lands to be added to be supplied to the secretary treasurer of the committee of adjustment that one digital copy of the registered plan of survey be supplied secretary treasurer of the land division committee and that prior to the issuance of the certificate of consent the county of renfrew provide written confirmation that has received a digital copy of the registered plan of survey Number three, that the Ontario land surveyor retained by the owner determine the width of the road right of way present, presently in place along Hydro Bay Road and where such right of way is less than 20 meters that a parcel of land representing the missing portion of half of this required width along the road frontage of the severed parcel be transferred to the township free of fees or encumbrances. Furthermore, that the applicant's legal counsel shall register the municipal bylaw dedicating this section of the land public. A copy of the registered bylaw must be sent to the secretary treasurer of the committee of adjustment for the condition to be considered complete. Number three, that a favorable archeological assessment prepared by a qualified professional in accordance with the guidelines of the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport is submitted. Number four, that a favorable environmental impact study prepared by a qualified professional is submitted. If there are site recommendations from the study, they are to be implemented through a development agreement with the township, which is to be registered on title. Number five, that a favorable water quality impact assessment in accordance with the terms of reference outlined in Appendix A to Section 16 of the County of Renfrew Official Plan is submitted. If there are site recommendations from the assessment, they are to be implemented through a development agreement with the township, which is to be registered on title. And lastly, that the applicant provides to the approval authority of the township a transfer deed of land conveying the severed land for the issuance of a certificate of consent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I do understand that the applicant is um, with us via, via video link. And so you may proceed, but first state your name for our record, please. Yes, uh, this is uh, Cord Extra speaking. Um, yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. I just uh, thought I'd be available in case there was any questions that uh, anybody on the uh, committee might have that I might be able to help them with. But uh, no, it uh, sounds like it was well covered. Thank you. You're welcome. Then I would ask <clears throat> council members if you have any um, comments or yes. Councillor Tabbert. Um, it says here that it's within 300 meters of Muskrat Lake and then it says 400 meters. Do we know, like, is it more than 400 meters then? Or I'm, I'm not sure why all these distances are in here. Yeah, so those, those refer to the, the policy. Um, so one of the archeological policy applies to any lands within 300 meters. So they're actually, the lands are closer than 300 meters, but because they fall within that, that buffer distance, um, an applicant here or basically anywhere within 300 meters of, of any navigable, navigable waterway has to do this archeological assessment. If there's been more than three severances, the 400 meter uh, reference applies to the Muskrat Lake policies. So anything within 400 meters of Muskrat Lake has to do this additional water quality impact assessment. So the lands are probably, as, as you can see on the photo, they're not too far from, uh, from the lake. I don't have the exact measurements, but I think that they're pretty, they're, they're within both 300 and 400. So that's, that's that. Any other comments? Saying not. Councillor Olmstead? Yeah, just a clerical thing um, on the conditions, just that there's two number threes on the conditions. So just, just clean that up, please. Uh, I'm fine with the uh, I'm fine with the file. Thank you, Councillor Olmstead. Anything else? Hearing none, I will call for a vote. All those in favor of this motion. Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Item number four is um, the confirmation of the minutes. Uh, and the, the motion is that the Committee of Adjustment approve the February 16, 2023 minutes. A mover and seconder, please. A move by Councillor Olmstead and seconded by Councillor Tabbert. 
All those in favor of this motion? On it. Oh, Sorry. discussion. Yes. Sorry, forgot the discussion part. Councillor Tabbert. It just out of curiosity, was the um, mover and seconder uh, updated? Thank you. Yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Having no other business for this committee, it is adjourned at, uh, let me see if I can read it, 1042 AM. Thank you.